So recently, our health minister, health minister Zulkifli Ahmad, he says that private hospitals should shift from pay for service to pay for outcome to improve health outcomes. Now, of course, as we all know, medical expenditure is very high in Malaysia. Uh, just to give a perspective on that, medical inflation rate in Malaysia is 12.6%, which is much higher compared to the global average of 5.6%. So I want to ask you, doctor, as a person who's worked in public as well as private yep. uh, space, is has private healthcare gone out of control? In perspective, from the perspective of uh, cost to the patient, I think in if you're looking at costs, I think it's more than twelve point five. I think it's almost hitting eighteen. Eighteen. I think. I My think goodness. Because stats can be a bit deceiving that come competitive to the way that we are looking at what's happening when you walk into a, a private facility yeah. or when you go into a private hospital, you see how the the, the bills just pop up. Yep. And uh, looking into. Uh, when what we looked at is whether it's uh, business oriented or patient oriented, I think we need to strike that balance. Uh, of course, we know that there are certain acts like the private healthcare facility and services act where there is a control of fee, fee regulation in terms of procedure. That means how much of fee does a doctor receives during his uh, service in a hospital. But the other inclusions were include like registration fee, nurses fee yep. and uh, your food maybe will be coming like a five star kind of restaurant service for you you will have to pay that yeah. your towels and stuff like that even so, though hospital food is nothing exactly close to that. so maybe you might pay for the bed for a certain price maybe at 200 ringgit or 150 ringgit or 250 whatsoever but then there's also a lot of frills that are included and that what that's what creates the the bill that that that, that just blows out of the proportion so what i see that is just like we need to go to a perspective of there is some form of audit going on hmm. in terms of uh, fee regulation. And maybe insurance companies, they need to have sort of like an undercover operation also in order to, to curtail uh, misdiagnosis or overdiagnosis. So when, when something can be mitigated in a, in a, in a, in a minimal fashion, you get thrown into a CT scan, you get thrown into an MRI, you get thrown into a wondrous kind of medical equipment just because we have it. And just because we feel that maybe we'll find something new mm. when we send it into a machine. But when you look into uh, private, not private, I mean uh, government healthcare or public healthcare, I think we are somehow sometimes able to, to mitigate or diagnose with the bare minimum uh, equipment and tools or diagnostics and get the same outcome. So, 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 so are you saying that private health care's uh, motivation is uh, uh, profit over people's definitely, safety? Definitely. I mean, you cannot deny that that they are a profit-oriented business. I mean, it only runs uh, in that. You just look at the amount of ability for them to scale up with new hospitals, look into they are present in the stock market and yeah. whatsoever. So, they have to report to their shareholders. They have to report to their owners and show like there is some form of profitability. If not, means you won't see that much of uh, private hospitals, clinics, dialysis centers, uh, mushrooming at this very at this very moment. So, is it? Are you also saying that uh, it is more profitable for humans to be sick as opposed for us to be in good health for the for the for the industry that you are part of? Uh, I think I think that's a wrong way to to look at it. I think there's also profit in in the way to prevent uh, uh, prevent uh, disease and uh, management. What I mean to say is like if you are able to to move the industry too much towards wellness, then you see less sick people, but the cake then moves towards preventive medicine. Uh, people investing into better food, people investing into better. Uh, work-life balance, people investing into exercise, people investing into uh, regular checkups, rather than, sp I'll give you a scenario, let's just say you're going to spend maybe 80,000 ringgit for uh, a procedure, sure. maybe let's, let's, let's put it a bypass. What if, you're what if you're able to spend like 2,000 ringgit every year for a very decent medical checkup? So, the issue now is like, look, are, are we are we going are we able in a, a government setting 
spend 80,000 ringgit even though you're going to pay a bare minimum of maybe 200 or 300 ringgit when you walk in to do a procedure hmm. in a government setting because it's all subsidized where your tax would have contributed in that way or you can ease down and give a uh, reward centric uh, tax system where people are able to spend money into this segment of businesses okay uh, rather than just looking at this like uh, like full on tertiary medical care surgery operations and stuff so that's one one, one thing to look at so i feel that uh, the spending is still going to be there is this where it's going to trickle down to 